you were a, a spokesman for Seven Up. Seven Up, I sure was. I was, was that your biggest, uh, your biggest. That like, was my gig? biggest thing. I think Seven Up was a big deal, man. I mean, I first of all, I auditioned for it, and then I was in Europe, hanging out. And I'm gonna confront. This is how I got the call to do the audition. I was on a nude beach in Spain, hanging out with naked Spanish girls, straight up chilling, because I was I was in Amsterdam doing comedy. Then I met this chick from Spain, and then I well, I went to visit her in Barcelona, and I was on a beach. With a little European phone, they say, hey, you got to come to America to audition for this thing. It's a short list because I told them, I said, I'm not leaving this beach to go hang, to be in line with 100 black dudes trying to go for some damn soda. Not going to do it. But they said it's a short list, only three of you on the list. I said, you know what? I might have a shot at this shit. Changed my flight, got to America. And then I got on this show on uh, Bravo called The It Factor. It was their first reality show. And they followed us around with cameras and shit. Um... And then um, um, they showed me going in for this audition, and I and and on the show I got the audition, I got this part. It wasn't planned or anything. I got the part. So that was one of my biggest things that I accomplished was being a spokesperson for an American product, Seven Up for two years. It was a big deal to me. It was like it was great, but I knew it wasn't gonna last forever. I mean, I did it. People still remember it. A anytime anybody goes, Yo, when you get mad when people say you seven up guy, I'll go, yeah, seven up yours, say it all day. Fuck that. Keep me in the mix. I don't give a shit. If seven up call me again, I'll be like, up yours. Let's do it again. Wait, so wait, is seven up owned by Coca-Cola or is it? Seven a... up was owned by um Cadbury Schweppes. It was, oh, okay. it, was, it was it was Dr. Pepper, Cadbury Schweppes in Got London it. and in um uh, Plano, Texas. Yeah. So major, major, major company. Major company. Corporate, very corporate. Um it, it, it was awesome, man. The money was awesome. That's why when you see people like that progressive lady, she is, she got to be loaded. Good Lord. But she's always going to be that progressive lady. She's always right. going to be that. That's the only part with that is you're that person. All, you know, you're the McDonald's guy. You're the, you know what I mean? But she's getting money like nobody's business. And, but it seems like all the spokesmen for 7-Up are black. Black males. That's what was weird. You had Joffrey Holder. Ha, 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 ha. The Uncola. Then you had CeeLo. CeeLo Green did some 7-Up stuff. You had Orlando Jones. You had Sugar Ray Leonard back in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. It's weird because it's such a white-ass product, yet they right. have black people pushing it. I'm surprised Steve Harvey hasn't done something for 7-Up. Right, because when you, when you think... I mean, like, because cause Sprite has always been kind of like a hip hop thing. They've always kind of branded themselves in the hip hop yeah, world with right. rappers and stuff like that. But but Seven Up never really did that. But yet they always had black men. They had a black, but they were very a little bit more conservative to me. Sprite yeah. was always a little more hip to me. They're right. Coca Cola. That's Coke. Coke is powerful. They always were a little more hip. They had LeBron. James. I mean, you have LeBron. Come on, LeBron. James. They were always a little bit like cooler. Penny Hardaway. Remember the Penny Hardaway with Chris Rock. They always had ah uh, right right. They always had a little bit. It was a little bit more youthful than the seven. Or seven up was very conservative. It was a little bit more conservative, but it was still fun. But it was very conservative. You know, I was wearing a goddamn sweater. Come on, I was wearing. Remember, I was wearing a vest, a sweater yeah. vest, and a green whatever with pants. Well, well, with, well you with actually slacks. <laughs> you took your underwear off in one of the commercials. No, I, I just had my shorts down, and I was in shape. So that was the surprise. And when I when I my first commercial came out. Man, everybody was like, yo, you didn't tell us. I go, because I don't say shit unless it's on. I, mm. Man, I'll talk. I'll be like, yo, I'm about to do a seven up commercial. And then people are like, I thought you said you were going to be on TV. You lied. I've learned in this business. This business beats you down with, with your hopes. You know how you have hopes? This business matumbos the shit out of your shit. That hope down. Fuck out of here. <laughs> that shit down. Not in my house. You never have hope here. Never, <laughs> ever have hope here. They mat it, they matumbo you to where you're 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 like almost like afraid. You're like a rescue dog. Like, eh, eh, should I have hope? You know what I mean? Literally, I'm not even trying to be. Yo, don't don't ever let anybody fool you with that positive thinking bullshit. It's okay, but a lot of times this business really beats you down with a lot of bullshit, and that's why you got to be careful. If you shoot something, shut the fuck up until it happens. Don't say shit until people see it. Don't say you just did a movie with Denzel until you see it. People do right. that shit out here. I go, a lot of people need, a lot of people, I have friends, I have friends that brag about auditions. They brag about, fuck, audition means you didn't get it yet, piece of shit. <laughs> it means you didn't get it. I got people who go, I'm busy. You're auditioning, bitch. 
Shut the fuck up. You were auditioning. It means you didn't get it. Right. I mean, look at the uh, look at the Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad. Uh, oh. <sighs> you know, she got a Pepsi ad. It didn't last very long. Because she's untalented. And the Jenners are annoying. And the, the, the Kardashians, listen, they made money. They make a lot of money. Whatever. I, what, I don't know what the fuck they do. <laughs> They're a beautiful family, but I don't know what the fuck they do. <laughs> I, I just don't know. I, and, and, that, and it's annoying because there's people who are busting their ass, who are going out on auditions, who are taking classes, who are doing this and taking this class, taking that class. And Jenner gets some shit. Please, man. I mean, and then, and then people will say I'm bitter. No, I'm not fucking bitter. I just want shit to be fair. Mm. Shit. Jenner, sit your ass down. You didn't sell nothing. <laughs> didn't you actually know Kanye from before, from I Chicago? I know Kanye. Yeah, I know Kanye. Yeah, I know Kanye. Um, I knew him before he blew up, blew up, you know. Um, with my boy, I'm going to give a shout out to Cootie. Cootie and Chike, who did, If you, are you a 30 by 30 um, um, watcher? You know, ESPN. Have yeah. you ever seen yeah. the documentary called Ben? About Ben Wilson, yeah, right. They shot that, and Cootie is one of Kanye's best friends. Cootie, or all from Chicago. Cootie used to film Kanye for years, for years. Remember through the wire, that they brought that to my house, to my apartment, to see what I thought about it before it was released. You understand? When I lived in Harlem, Cootie, I give props to Cootie, C O O D I E. That's his name. Yeah, that's his, that's his, Kim and Chike, man. Dope-ass directors, you know? What's your greatest Kanye story? My greatest Kanye? Because well, everyone Kanye, has one. My greatest Kanye story? No, I don't really. It's just when I hung out with Kanye, it was just nothing crazy. We're just hanging. Nothing, nothing crazy. Just, hey, what's up? The last time I saw him, he was coming out of a McLaren. I was like, I suck. I was, <laughs> I was getting off of a bus, I think. And, and Kanye's doors went up. He said, what up, Godfrey? I said... What's up? Your fucking income. Jesus Christ. He came out of a dope. His car just did some cool shit. Just, his car was like, what's up? I don't know what his car did. I think it was doing this. His car was going like that. And he made his car dance. And I just was walking. <laughs> and he just said, what up, Godfrey? That's the last time I saw him. Was, but it was just normal shit. Nothing ever over the top. Nope. No, no, no. I, can, I can tell you a Mike Tyson story. Let's hear it. Okay. I knew Tyson. Tyson knew who we were. You know, he knows about comedians. I was in L.A. Everybody goes to the to the W Hotel in Hillgard over there in Westwood. That's black people's hangout. I would see Alicia Keys, R. Kelly. So one time I see Mike Tyson. And I'm like, oh, there goes Tyson. And Tyson knew us, comedy guys. He's like, oh, you the comedy. What's up, man? Blah, blah, blah. So this girl was with him. He's holding hands with this chick. This is Tyson. He's still boxing now. And the girl goes, Godfrey, hey, what's up? Remember me? Man, Tyson looked at me and looked at her and said, okay, wait a minute. What's going on here? I said, I don't know her. <laughs> no, I do not know her, Mr. Tyson. I sure don't. She was like, you don't remember me? I said, fuck no, I don't remember you. Mike Tyson is right here, and I do not remember you. I was, man, when I tell you I, did, I had amnesia, I said, no, could you please leave me alone? Because Tyson was like this, I'm trying to figure something out here. What's going on? I was like, fuck that. Might have a flashback. A Trevor Burbick flash. <laughs> fuck that. See, these girls would get your ass whooped. I was like, no, I do not know you. Please leave me alone. Yeah, no, I met Tyson once, yeah, one time. He's and nice I remember he guy. just kept a asking me the same question like over and over again. And it's Mike Tyson, so you got to keep answering it. I, I, remember, I, I was a mixtape DJ, and I gave him like the CD. I said, "Oh, oh, Mike, you know, I'm a big fan. You know, this is my mixtape. Right? You did this mixtape? Yes, I did. This mixtape. This is you, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> You're the one who put this together. Yes. And he just kept doing this over and over again. Yeah, We're right. like, like some soul food you. parking lot, and I'm like, and you keep answering I, him. I remember I keep, seeing Mike I kept Tyson answering. eating ice cream one time. That shit was the weirdest shit ever. It was he was with a bunch of dudes, and he was eating the ice cream like boom, and cats were just sitting there like. Yeah, it, it's just Mike Tyson eating a fucking ice cream. It was the toughest shit I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen somebody eat an ice cream so tough. I said, and we, it was downtown. Remember, I, I don't know, you're not from New York, right? No. Well, I, I lived in New York for a long time. Well, New York, remember Don Hills? Don Hills was a club downtown, Don Hills. Well, I was at Don Hills, we used to party all the time. And I was at, it was this little shop and it was ice cream. And Mike Tyson eating ice cream. 
I was, I was boy, I was afraid. I said, ice cream. I said, I've never seen ice cream so scared. Tyson's just like eating that shit, like boom, eating that motherfucker. I was like, damn. How do you eat an ice cream that tough? You had a show with Shaq and Gary Owen? Yeah, Shaquille O'Neal was called Upload with Shaq. I've known Shaq for years. And Shaq um, called me one day and said, I told you I was going to do a show with you, man. I said, I told you, man. I told you I was going to do a show. I want to do a comedy show, a little video show and shit. We're going to, you know. You know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> so Shaq, it was, a, it, was a, it was for two seasons, me, him, Gary Owen. And we just do, uh, we would just make fun of videos. And Shaq would do sketches. Shaq is a big ass kid, man. Shaq loves comedy. It was fun. It was fun. It was it, it was on True TV. It lasted two years, and uh, Shaq's still loaded, and I'm fucking sitting here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because back in the day, me and Shaq did a mixtape together where he dissed uh, Mad Skills. Oh, did he? You know yeah. I got Mad. I yeah. got Mad Skills. No, no, no. That his one song was that. You know I got skills, man. You know I got skills, man. <laughs> Remember his th rapping? I th 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 think this was after this. Oh, he dissed somebody? And he actually, and, and, and in the diss song, he actually dissed Kobe. Oh, in, yeah. In the, in the same song. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. Yo, remember so, that? Something like that, yeah. So he dissed Kobe? He dissed Kobe. And I remember afterwards, I met him, because yeah. you know, we, were, we were kind of working everything out over the phone, and I yeah. met him, and this was the biggest human being I've ever seen in my oh, entire life. He's seven one, three something pounds, and he literally can take you and lift you up like that. Because he'll be like, mm -hmm. just stand right there, I'm going to lift you up. <laughs> and he just does that and moves you. And imagine, this is him in his like late 30s and 40, 40s, and he's moving you like that. Imagine when he was 19, 20, and, he, and you had to stick his ass, and there's sweat on him. And you had to be like, <laughs> and he's just doing this to you. Get out of my way. You in the way, Bob. You in the way. Imagine that shit. He's a he's a dynamic human being. Not only that is he's his heart is big. He's the shit, man. He's, he always keeps it real. He always the nicest guy in the world. The nicest. When I tell you Shaq is the real deal, he's the real deal. Real deal. He always bullshits me though, but he's the real deal. He put me on his show, so I can't get mad. That's my man though. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, Shaq, Shaq is dope, man. Shaq is, you know? he's so great, man. And he's so normal. You feel like you've known him for a long time. You know, the first time I met him was at this party. I think it was his wife's birthday. And he put his big ass, this fucking hand just covered me. He said, I'm a big fan. Because <laughs> I bought Shaq's, I bought his, you know, I bought his rap show, uh, his CD. Well, yeah, I mean, he went platinum like twice. Yeah, you know I got skills, man. You know I got skills, man. I'm big like a gorilla. I'm the twizzer, the twizzer. Remember he used to rap with Foo Schnickens. Shaq right. Foo, because we ain't got nothing to prove. Shaq Foo. Shaq was yeah. awesome. Shaq was like, he played basketball. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He was a rapper. He, he loves the pop lock. I still want to battle him in pop locking. He thinks he can lock, but I'll, I'll, kill, it. I'll kill his ass with my shit. He don't know. Shaq, I'm coming... Coming after you. <laughs> he loves comedy too, and he's put a lot of people on the map with his Shaq All Star, his All Star oh, right. comedy. He's oh, put yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of people on the map. He see, he's one of those guys where he pays it forward. Let me give you a platform. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Well, listen, Godfrey, man, yo. definitely a pleasure. Glad we finally got together to do this. I'm yo. I'm, this is my, so I, I, like I said in, in uh, Goodfellas, you broke your cherry. Hey!